Hi folks, welcome to our second segment of the Fataba Video Classroom. This is Programming 102. In our first segment, we went through basic setups of the radio, how to navigate the menus, things like this. Basically, the, the real short information to get you in the air as quickly as possible. In this segment, we're going to be talking about endpoints, limit settings, dual rates, and a little more in depth on the function menu. Now, in these videos, we use the 14MZ for illustrative purposes. It has a nice large menu, um, and so it's very easy to see. But remember that the programming methodology on the 14MZ is exactly the same as it would be on the 8FG, the 12FG, and the 12Z. Now, let's start off. We're going to be talking about endpoints a little bit here initially, but I want to talk to you about the mechanical linkages. Um, it's very important, even when you have radios that are as powerful as these radios are, to set up your mechanical linkages as perfectly as possible. Servos are measured with a one-inch arm on them for torque, so that anytime you read a servo torque rating, it has a one-inch arm on it. That's how you get the ounce-inches of, of torque rating. If you put a longer arm on it and move it, it's going to actually decrease the torque a little bit. Now the other thing is, is that you want your servo to throw as far as possible anytime you do a setup. If you have only have your servo moving a little bit, then the resolution is not going to be as good. So the further you can throw that servo, the better the resolution. Let's go in and we'll take a look at the endpoint menu on the transmitter. You'll see we'll go over to the linkage menu here and move into it. Uh, we'll just touch the endpoint settings. And now over on, you see, all of these endpoints are currently set at 100%. This is a stock setup. So again, it's really important that we get these set up as close as we can to 100%, or even a little more if you need to. But again, you want to make sure that you're not overthrowing your control service or anything else. So really important data there. Now on the, on the limit side of things, we're gonna, you can see all of the limits are set at 135%. Now what those do is reduce the amount of throw that the servo has when it's affected, or that channel has, when it's affected by another channel. So if we go in here and turn on our aileron and rudder mixing, we'll just, we'll just do this as a simulation real quick for you. We drop out to the model menu, and we'll turn this on. We're just going to set it at straight 100% mix. Pushing this button just turns it from inhibit to off, uh, or on in this case. Um, we're going to go back to our linkage menu and take a quick look. We'll go over to our servo monitor so you can see what, uh, what the mixing looks like here. I'll move the aileron channel and you can see the rudder and the aileron moving at the same time. If I move them together you'll notice that the rudder now deflects to 135% instead of just 100% that could possibly overthrow that surface, cause your servo to bind. So that's a condition we want to avoid. So we do that by going into our limit settings. Now we're going to go up and set, we're going to reduce our limits on the rudder's channel down to about 105% just for illustrative purposes. Do it on the right side and on the left side. Again, use that double arrow to move down 5% at a time. Then we'll go back up and uh, Take a look at the uh, servo monitor screen again. Now you'll see that when I uh, move the aileron channel, there's everything going out to 100%. If I feed in the rudder channel, it just increases only this time by only 5%. So we've reduced that channel and hopefully avoided any binding or servo stalling issues. Now the next thing we're going to do is take a look at some dual rates. Again, we're going to go into the model menu here hit the dual rate AFR or the AFR dual rate button and you can see now that uh, both the bottom and the top of this this uh, slope here are set at hundred percent so we're going to go over to the uh, DR button and we're going to set up our first dual rate now the 14MZ has the ability to set up six different dual rates but we're only going to set up one initially we're going to turn this on and it will actually come up as off in this case we're going to go over here and we're going to assign the switch that we want to use. And I'm going to pick switch D in this case, which is kind of our upper right corner uh, button or switch there. 
and we're going to assign the on position. Now this can be a little confusing at times because in my case I want the top position to be where I have full throw. And I want the bottom position to be where my dual rate comes into effect. So that's where I'm going to set up my dual rate. So you can see I switched the bottom to off, this middle to off, and the top to on. Now we'll just close these menus up. Close that one and one more to close. Now we'll go back in here and I'm going to move my switch to the dual rate position and I'm going to set these down to about 80 percent both on the top and bottom. Now you'll see uh, as we're adjusting the bottom side here we'll click that down and you'll see that that slope coming up now and uh, as we get up and they're reducing the rate. Move over to rate B and pull the bottom down or the top down a little bit. Now we'll go back out and take a look at the servo monitor menu. Actually, you can see the rates changing here as I flip the switch. We'll go over now and look at the servo monitor menu and uh, you can see it happen in real time. So there's the servo monitor menu. Uh, you can see the ailerons moving as well as the rudder since we still had that turned on. Now we can change the rates and as I flip that switch you'll see the rate decreasing and increasing with each flip of the switch. So that's how to set up your real simple dual rates. Now we're going to go into the function menu. Push the linkage menu there and there's the function button. This is the most powerful menu on any of these four transmitters. You can assign any lever, any switch, or any joystick to any function you want it to have. So it's, this is a really a place where you can do a lot. Now we're going to set up a four aileron wing uh, we're going to set up a two rudder tail and a two elevator tail. So to do this, I'm going to start out by assigning my two elevators. I've just picked a channel here next to the other elevator. Next thing we can do is assign four ailerons. So you'll see I've come down right below the first aileron. I'm going to select another aileron, tell it yes. I'll move down another one. I want these right in a row. Tell it yes. And then I'll go over to the other side and pick one more aileron. And uh, we'll tell it yes to that menu. So we've got our ailerons and our elevators set up now. And now we're going to set up our rudders. We need two of those, so I'm just going to select two rudders. There's the first one and the second one. So you can see in just a few seconds we've set up already, uh, done the basic setup for a very complicated aircraft. Um, the only thing we really have left to do now is to set the endpoints and our servo reversing. You can see now on the servo monitor screen how everything is, there's all four ailerons moving together, the two elevators moving together. You're seeing the, the rudder move of course when I move the uh, aileron stick and there's your two rudders moving together. So very complicated setup but very easy to do. So that's programming 102. We hope you enjoyed it, we hope you learned something and we hope you'll stop in next time and see what we have in store for you. In that next segment, we hope to do flight conditions, a little uh, on the th how to set up a throttle cut, and also how to set up your fail safes. Thanks for stopping in. <laughs>